Good morning students, how are you all? I guess you might be great. In this video, let's study about the natural fibers, synthetic fibers and plastics. By the way, we are entering into the third chapter of our textbook. In this chapter, we shall deal in detail with the natural and synthetic fibers, natural and synthetic polymers, polymerizations, usefulness and problems of plastics, all right? But before that, let's understand the natural and man-made materials, the things. Let me place before you some images of the things or materials that you see every day in your houses, in the market and in your school. Okay, so this is sand on the top left most. Then we have cement just below that. And below that is the coal. And on the top right most, let me put cotton. Below that, the thread. And just below that, let me put graphite. The center looks blank, isn't it? Let me put some more images. We have bricks here, then plastics, then glass. And again on the top, chairs, wood, and then soil. Oops, not yet. Let me put gas here. That is ethene. Ethene gas. Can we see this gas? No. So the name ethene is enough for us. Okay. Now tell me what are the differences among them? Anybody? Right. Let me tell you. Sand, coal, ethene gas, wood, soil, cotton, and graphite exist in nature. They have been made by nature and have been made by plants. For example, cotton and wood have been made by plants. So we call them natural materials. What about the rest? Bricks, plastics, glass, chairs, thread, and pencil. They have been made by the human beings for their use. For example, bricks are made from sand and soil. Glassware are made from sand. Plastics are made from ethene gas. Chairs are made from wood. Threads are made from cotton and so on. So, we call them man-made materials, right? Okay, now let us write them down systematically. Here on the left we have natural materials and on the right man-made materials. So the first point in natural materials, we can write the materials or the things which occur in nature and are used as such are called natural materials. Let us write about the man-made materials. The materials or the things which are made from natural materials by chemical processes or without it are called man-made materials. The second point on the left we can write, they are made by nature. And on the right side we can write, they are made by man. When we say man here, that means this word man stands for the entire human family, right? These man-made materials can be called as synthetic materials or artificial materials, okay? Let us write down some examples from the images we saw. So for natural things we have wood, cotton, coal, graphite, sand and so on. For the man-made things we have plastics, paints, cement, chairs, glassware, thread, etc. Now let us apply the same concept in this chapter. So we begin with fibers. So. What's a fiber? A fiber is a very thin and thread-like material which is used for knitting fabric. Fabric meaning cloth. Cloth from which you stitch clothes. There are two types of fibers by the way. Let us apply the concept here that we saw a short while ago. So according to our concept we have two types of fibers natural and synthetic fibers. Synthetic fibers are also called as artificial fibers. Let us now differentiate them. So we have natural fibers here and synthetic fibers on the right. Let me draw a small table to differentiate them. Here we go. There we are. 
natural fibers are the fibers which are freely available in nature. So we can say the fibers which are obtained from plants and animals are called natural fibers. We have some beautiful examples of natural fibers here. Cotton fiber obtained from plants, jute fiber also obtained from plants, wool fiber obtained from animals, silk fiber also obtained from animals, right? What about the synthetic fibers? Where do you find them? The fibers which are made by human beings are called synthetic fibers, right? Simple. Here also we have some beautiful examples of synthetic fibers like rayon, nylon, polyester, acrylic and etc. Where do we get all these synthetic fibers? Well, we shall study about them as we proceed. Let's move on for the moment. Let's now talk about a very interesting topic, the polymers. The word polymer suggests poly meaning many, mer for us meaning merging. That is something to do with many things being merged into one. Right? Interesting. Aha. So, a polymer is formed by the combination or joining of a large number of small units. And the smaller units are called monomers. These monomers could be similar, that is, the same type of monomers. Or they could be dissimilar, that is, different types of monomers. In other words, we can say, a polymer is a big molecule formed by the combination of so many small molecules. We have a small definition here. The process of formation of polymers from monomers is known as polymerization. Please remember this sentence. It's very important. And again, let us apply our basic concept here. So we have two types of polymers, natural and synthetic polymers. Let us differentiate them. So we have natural polymers here and synthetic polymers on the right. Let me draw a small table again. Here we go. There we are. So for natural polymers, we can say they are made by nature. They exist in nature. And we have some beautiful examples here cotton which is polymer of cellulose, jute which is a polymer of lignocellulose, and cellulose itself is a polymer of glucose monomer. And what about the synthetic polymers? Synthetic polymers are man-made polymers. They are made in factories by the companies. And we have some beautiful examples again here. Nylon which is a polymer of amides polyester, which is a polymer of esters, and polythene, which is a polymer of ethene gas. This polythene is nothing but a polythene bag or a poly bag, as many of you say, which you use for carrying things from the market. That's all folks for the moment. Hope it was interesting. Please come prepared for the online class till polyesters on page 46 of our textbook. We'll have a good discussion. So see you there.